<laughs> hey, welcome to Faith of Victory Church Wednesday night service. We're so glad to have you tonight. We're, we're pleased to have you. We trust you'll be ministered to and blessed. And all those here tonight, if you'll go ahead and share and let everybody know that we're on live and that they can be a part of the service. We, we have other people join in with us, praise the Lord. Um, a uh, couple real quick announcements. Don't forget that we need, need to start getting count in, particularly by this Sunday, about um, whether or not or, or well, how many people you are bringing or coming with you. And um, so we want to make sure that you get that information in and act, start, actually start getting money in for that. Um, Six fifty for an adult, uh, five fifty for children, and uh, we <clears throat> are excited. Amen. Hallelujah. That's that's Sunday week. Sunday week, so it's, it's moving up on us quick, so um, it's going to be good, it's going to be fun, and um, you know, we're excited, and somebody say Shanda, all righty, praise God, <clears throat> but if you, you know, if you got fam family coming, if you got five, ten people coming from your family, or whatever, that's fine, just let us know in advance, <clears throat> also we, we did say, um, if you're planning on taking stuff home, like, you know, you've got a pound of barbecue, plates or what you need to know that count in advance and you got to pay for it um, so that it's fair okay right. mm -hmm. yep I am um, I went into um, Smithfield's the other day and for a whole chicken with 12 hush puppies or thirteen dollars Five fifty. <coughs> you know what? It's fifty for kids. I don't know why I said five fifty. Kids ten and under four fifty. After ten, they're adults. When it comes to eating, but I know some kids are ten and over that can put down some vittles. Don't you, Jeff? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get into. We're, we're moving into some new teaching tonight. We're going to begin. We're going to kind of do an intro, and then we're going to start more things. I'll be honest with you, I've got these smaller um, epi, epi, um, expos, these, these sin size, they're all easy to write with. Um, <clears throat> looking at Ephesians chapter 6, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll begin reading here. I think uh, verse 12 may not be the right place. Listen. Um, verse 16, actually. Nope, no, 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 no. Um, 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Have your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Where you quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18 is what we're after. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Supplication means prayer, petition. It's a petition. Um, and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praise God. As for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of God. Okay, so we're going down through verse 19. Okay, and so here we have in verse 18, this is going to be our key verse. Praying always with all prayer. Um, one translation says it this way, all kinds of prayer. Okay. There's, all, there's different types of prayer. Now, the, the most famous prayer in the church today is the, if it be thy will prayer. That, that seems to be the gen generic prayer for the majority of the body of Christ. Lord, do this, if it be thy will. Lord, heal me, if it be thy will. Lord, bless my, give, you know, I need a new car, if it be your will. Lord, uh, I need a new house, if it be your will. Lord, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of always thrown into a lot of prayer. And uh, what we've been doing many times is, is um, spinning our wheels. Dad Hagen used the analogy that, you know, uh, there, there are all kinds of prayer. There's different kinds of prayer. There are different kinds of prayer. You know? How many know that baseball is a sport? Football is a sport. Basketball is a sport. Golf is a sport. 
Rugby is a sport. Badminton is a sport. And for Jeff, golf is a sport. For Dick, tennis is a sport. All right? <clears throat> but they're not all the same kind of sport. You can't play football by golf rules. You can't play tennis by badminton rules. I mean, they may be more similar than anything, but you, know, uh, you can't play basketball by football rules. Although sometimes when I look at the NBA, I think they are. Okay? Um, you know, especially, you know, with the pro basketball, it's like, you know, back them down, butt, butt them back, and then dunk. You know, I don't quite think that uh, Naismith, whatever, uh, envisioned that when he created the game. You know, uh, you know, back, you know, just just ramming them down. You know, the defenders don't have any anything. They can't they can't lean for it at all. I mean, I hate the rules of, of, of modern basketball. I think it's just it's cheap in the game. But that's another that's another day. <coughs> but <coughs> You can't shake up all your different sports and throw them out in the floor and say, well, there's sports and play them by all, different, all the same rules. It won't work. You can't play cricket by baseball rules, nor baseball by cricket rules. Well, if you hit the ball in baseball and run straight across the pitchers down to second base, they're going to call you out. And if you run from second base and play it on a ball, they're going to call you out. You can't bypass the other bags, okay? It just doesn't work that way. <clears throat> so the rules that govern the different types of sports don't govern um, each sport the same. Okay, they're different. The rules that govern prayer are different. There are different types of prayer. So we want to kind of, in our introduction here tonight, talk about some of the, just kind of overview uh, some of the different types of prayer. So let's go with, with the first one. Let's go ahead and, and jump in on the if it be, if it be thy will prayer, Okay. I'm going to call it the if it be thy will prayer. Now, we get this from Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus goes and tells the disciples, stay here uh, while I go over there on there and pray. And he goes and prays. Now, Father, um, if there's any other way, let this cut pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Okay? He does that three times. They pass out, can't even make it an hour, you know, waiting for him, you know, to pray for him or whatever. They're, they're, they're zonkered. Okay? Because that couldn't you pray one hour, you know? Couldn't you stay awake one hour? You, you kind of almost hear one to say, you bums. You know? Probably not. All right. <clears throat> Jesus never... You, did you know Jesus didn't use this when he, when he was calling Lazarus out of the dead? Father, I know that thou always hearest me, that thou hearest me, and that thou always hearest me. Amen? When he prayed about the raising of Lazarus from the dead before, before he called him forth, he didn't say, Father, if it be thy will, raise him up. Raise him up. This is the only time we see this in use, is when he was committing himself to the will of God. He already knew the will of God. It was a commit myself to his will. Okay? So we would really re refer to this as the prayer of consecration and dedication. This is the prayer of consecration and dedication. You are committing yourself to the will of God. Lord, if you want me to go to Africa, I'll go. And you may not know that it's his will. Now, Jesus, Jesus is looking for another way out. If there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That's where, if it be thy will. He's, if, there's, if, there's just, if there's any way, to do this, to accomplish this without me having to go through what lies before me, let it pass from me. <clears throat> but, not my will, but thy will be done. The prayer of consecration and dedication. You consecrate and you dedicate yourself to the love of God. You may, you know, 
The Bible tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Doesn't it? But you may not be called to go to Africa. How do you find out? By consecrating and dedicating yourself to the will of God, making yourself available. I will go where you want me to go. I will do what you want me to do. I will fulfill whatever purpose and plan you have in, in the calling on my life. I will consecrate to that. I will dedicate myself to that. That comes in consecration and dedication. Okay? This is the only place we use these, this phrase. I find it interesting, and I've, I've taught this before, uh, back in the, uh, during the height of the healing revival, um, back in the 40s, you know, 1947 to 1958, 11 years was known as the healing revival in America. Um, with all the divine healing going on, the Episcopal Church, or, or the Anglican Church of England, actually, um, commissioned a team to go study this divine healing phenomena. Okay? And after three years, they reported back to the diocese. And when they got back, here's what they said in their report. After studying the subject of the subject of divine healing and observing this, da, 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 we have found out and determined that we can no longer use the faith destroying phrase, if it be thy will, when it comes to divine healing. <clears throat> it destroys faith. Why? Because faith begins where? Where the will of God is known. Faith begins where the will of God is. If we don't know God's will, we can't have faith. We can hope. We can wish. But we can't have faith. Okay? So until we know the will of God, we can't have faith for it. Now, when God speaks to us and he gives us a direction, say, um, Lord, I want to go to Africa. Or, or, do you want me to go to Africa? He comes back and says, yes, you're called to go to Africa. I'm calling you. I'm summoning you to Africa. Now you can have faith for provision, faith for sustenance, faith for open doors, faith for everything. Why? You know he spoke to you. You know his will. And because it's his will, you can accomplish the task. Lord, I wanna, I'm, I'm just going to go to Africa. You can't have, you run into a tough spot over there, first thing you're going to go, well, I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to be here, Lord. One of the, one of the things I found out um, when the Lord called me to Greensboro, and I'll be honest with you, it was a supernatural call. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes I look back and I get, <clears throat> I do get frustrated and not having seen the things that I know God has for us yet, yet, yet. But if it had not been for such a supernatural event of him revealing his will to me, I probably would have packed up 25 years ago and gone. Because I would have gone and my wife would have helped me. Are you sure we're supposed to be here? I don't know. You know, that, that GP in the sky, I thought it meant go preaching. It was, God was saying go plow or something. I mean, you know, <clears throat> but I, I'll never forget. I, I, I mean, it's ingrained in me that um, when I received the call to come, you know, I needed to be ready to come to Greensboro and to fill the pulpit of the pastor of the of the church, the, 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 the uh, original foundation church of this ministry, um, that I need to be able to come to Greensboro at a moment's notice and fill the pulpit because they were in Tulsa being ministered to uh, for divine healing. And, um, and I'm praying. You know, I'm working at Parker's Barbecue. By the end, no, I've, I've actually come off Parker's. I'm working at the church. There you go. So um, I'm, I'm just spending extra time in prayer at home in the evenings, you know, and um talking to the Lord about, you know, what would he have me minister and so forth. And I'll never forget the middle of that week because we, you know, we got a call early in the week be, to be ready to go to, at the drop of a hat. The Lord spoke and said, now this will this will mess up a word of faith guy who's young. That pastor will die. And you will go to Greensboro and you will become the pastor of that church. Now, was it God's will that he died? No. But he knew the beginning from the end. He knew he wasn't going to receive. He did, it wasn't his will for him to die. Okay? And, you know, and, and God loved him as much as he loves any of us. All right? He was a good man. He loved the Lord. He had a heart for ministry. So much so that instead of staying and, and getting the help he needed, he had to get back and take care of the church. Yeah, you know, he, he, he couldn't see 
around that. And, uh, you know, it's admirable to have that kind of heart, but at the same time, he didn't listen to the wisdom that was trying to say, stay. We can help you if you'll stay. And he just had to get back, had to get back and take care of the church. And the, the church needed him whole, okay? But, you know, we, we, can, we can get off in areas and, and, and not and be in sin or be a, a jerk or whatever, just letting the, the, letting the heart for certain things lead us in the wrong path and not listening to counsel and wisdom that would maybe take us in a different way. So anyway, and all that to say, trying to demean him, okay? He loved the Lord. He loved the church. He loved the people, okay? But God knew he wasn't going to receive. And so he told me. Now, thank God, I, you know, well, I about to say, thank God we didn't have Facebook back then. I wouldn't have done it then. <clears throat> I didn't get on any kind of telephone, telegraph, or tell a woman. That was a joke. Don't give me a misogynic, stupid post, okay? I was just being funny. All right. You know, they used to say there's three kind of forms of communication, telephone, telegraph, and tell a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, we, if we can't laugh at ourselves and have fun, you know, you know, you, you got people out there who probably saw that and just they're they're in the floor wreathing in anger right now. <clears throat> and if you're wreathing, come out because you're acting like a snake. Anyway, <laughs> Jeff. Anyway, so he spoke to me that way. Well, the end of the week comes and they call back and say uh, Ed doesn't need to go. Uh, he went home. And I forgot about February. Okay, I let it go. Okay. Now, I didn't even tell my wife. Okay, you understand? I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell nobody. I'm sitting there like, buddy, you just ring that up in your head. Yeah, I went to Pepe's Pizza Den and got the, the way too much pizza. There's a place in Greenwood that used to be called Pepe's Pizza Den. They were, they were famous for years. Anyway, um, you have way too much pizza, spicy kind, you know, and um, that was February. Well, then May comes along, we get a phone call that he's passed away and that they needed me to be ready to go to Greensboro. And so they had uh, Bob Lemon come in from Tulsa and Bob, uh, Bob Boos came in from Tulsa and uh, I came a weekend and then a weekend after that, um, uh, oh, I forget um, Tom Arnold came, I think. And uh, <clears throat> and then the next week I came, and I came every weekend after that. And I was driving up there. So every Friday, Jamie and I and Jessica would get in our Buick Regal, and we would drive up here to Israel. We were staying at Howard Johnson's of the residency, and one of, they put us in one of those two. Um, well, actually, Saturday morning. We'd come up on Saturday morning. Preach Saturday morning, I mean Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Monday get up and drive back home, and they, they would let me off at Greville. The church was allowing that Monday off to travel back and forth um, to help the church. May, June, July, August. I'm still working at church full time. Coming up here, they're giving me an offering every week. You know, I forgot how much it was. I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> and um, finally. I'm in the office one day at the church in Greenville, and the pastor comes to me and says, uh, Ed, what are you going to do about that church in Greensboro? I said, I'm supposed to take it. Well, why had not you said something? Well, I said, I've known since February I was going to be the pastor of that church. Then, you know, they're really like, you had told anybody? I said, well, I'm let, I was walking it out. I was letting it play. I was letting it just walk. I, would, I wasn't pushing, and I wasn't uptight, and I wasn't trying to figure out how to make it work because he had already told me. See, I already had gone through the if it be thy will part. Am I supposed to go to Greensboro? Because when he tells me that, I'm praying about that. Like, you, you, uh, were well, you talking to me? You know? Sure, I did not I did pick up somebody else's broadcast. You know? Uh, you know, I got on, on the wrong frequency and got data I wasn't supposed to have or something, you know. And uh, he said, well, what do you think? He said, well, but Brother Buddy's been calling me and telling me you're supposed to go. I know you're supposed to go. I said, well, I know I'm supposed to go. And, you know, and that was middle of August, and by the end of September, we were here, installed as pastors, and moved here and, and, took, and took the church and became pastors 
Uh, um, you know, when we, you know, we, we changed the name to Faith and Victory Church. And uh, <clears throat> Brother Buddy came and put us in. I mean, you know, one of the most caring, loving pastor to pastors you will ever find was Buddy Harrison. Uh, you, you just won't find it. You will not find a gift in the body of Christ that loved pastors and invested more in pastors than he did. I mean, and I still, even though he's gone to be with the Lord, still honor and respect the investment he made in our life. Okay? But because we consecrated and dedicated when we weren't, I wasn't sure. <laughs> like, whoa, baby. You're talking to me. But now that I have that word, I see I've got that word. Paul wrote to Timothy, if I had a good warfare with the prophecies that went before thee. I have that word, so I've moved out of the if it be thy will arena. <coughs> and I walk in confidence. I know God called me here. I've had people tell me to leave. You need to leave. You need to get out of there. I love you, brother. But the voice that's told me come has not told me go. And I don't know that he will. I, I don't know that. That I don't know. But unless he does, I'm here. Because that's what he told me to do. Well, you don't have the success of the other. I can't help it. I, my, my success cannot be measured on the size or who got bigger or who got faster or who did this. It has to be on am I obeying God and doing what God said to do. That's, that's, that's the only way I can measure it. My obedience to God. Think about the man who won Billy Graham. They've, they've had to go do research, but his name is not a known name. But he led Billy Graham to Jesus. Now, Billy gets all this, you know, got all, and, and rightfully so, he got all this, you know, uh, accolades and everything for all the souls he brought to Jesus. But guess who else gets part of that reward? The man who led Billy Graham to Jesus. Okay? Um, Charles Finney. The great revivalist. What a lot of people don't know about church history is that he had a close friend ministry partner who would go into towns ahead of him three weeks, month, and pray. Get in the hotel room, lock himself up, and pray and for weeks for revival. Well, Finney would come in, and they'd have revival. He's the great revivalist. And behind the scenes, somebody never heard of. But he, was, he is just as successful in the eyes of God because he did what God told him to do. He obeyed God. And he prayed that revival in. And, of course, Finney knows that. He knew who was in the backgrounds praying. But, it was, but, see, it's not about us. It's not about our name. It's not about the accolades. History does that stuff. Men do that stuff. We're looking at the records of book of heaven of who's going into heaven. That's what we're after. Amen? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Somebody had to hold up Moses' arms. Aaron and Ur held up his arms. You know? Or Joshua. Joshua and Ur. Aaron and Joshua. Somebody. Aaron and Ur. Okay. Held up his arms. Huh? Judah been her. <laughs> Carlton Heston and the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> I'll be honest with you. The second, the second one they came out with, you just—I mean, the first one was the best. I watched the second one. I kind of went, ah, "Okay, it's all right." Let's get Charleston back on the screen. Okay, um, but when we 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 pray, if it be Thy will, until we get faith. Once we get faith, this is over. Once we have an answer, it's over. We don't interject that into other types of prayer. Why? Because other types of prayer, we already have answers to. Okay? Now, I'm not going to get into the, all these tonight, <coughs> but we had, the, we had the prayer of, um, I'll say, worship, adoration, prayer. Now, remember, we've talked about prayer many times. We say it's, it's communicating with God. 
Okay? To worship, to worship and adoration. You know, adoration is, is you know, we're adoring God, we're honoring God, we're, we're ministering our heart of love and thanks and, and, and just gratefulness to God. So, we don't say, Lord, if it be your will, receive my prayer. No. <coughs> this is where we come and say, Lord, you're awesome, you're marvelous, you're wonderful. Who is like our God in all the earth? You know, you get into the Psalms, you start seeing David and how, and how he says the things that he says about God and how wonderful God is and how great and mighty are thy ways, you know, and, 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 and past finding out and all these, these wonderful things that are said in worship and just absolute adoration of the greatness of God. Well, what do we find out about all this? The Word. And we're not going to say, Lord, uh, if it be your will, you know, um, I think you're great. You, you see, it don't fit there. Okay? So, the, the, uh, you know, number three kind of it, it kind of segues on this somewhat. Okay? But it's also uh, distinctive in, in its use. This is simply giving yourself in adoring and honoring and worshiping the Father. Okay? Thanksgiving prayer is the thankful heart for the things he's done. I couldn't have done that with the big pen. <laughs> this is um, Thanksgiving prayer. This is where we come, we thank God. Through prayer and supplication, with Thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. We thank Him. It's not just adoring and worshiping. This, that, that's... This is being thankful for what he's done or what he's promised he'll do. You're thanking. You're, you're demonstrating a grateful heart to the things he's done by thanking him. He, 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 he wants to do it. But it's always... You, how many love your kids? Your grandkids? Now you want to give them and bless them, but it's always nice when they come back and thank you for it. Okay? It's nice when they thank you for it. Instead of kind of grabbing it and running out there. And they'll do that when they're younger. Okay? You know? But, you know, as, as a parent or a grandparent, it, it's just wonderful when they run up and jump in your arms and say, Papa, Granny, or Dan, I love you. And just give you a big hug. And not, nothing involved, no, no Slurpee or, you know, uh, some kind of candy or whatever. Just I love you. And they run out of the room. <clears throat> what, or money. But at the same time, they come over and, and, you're, and they, they come to see you and say, here, honey, Granny's got a dollar for you this week. <coughs> and they just give you a big hug and say, thank you, Granny. Okay? It's good. To have that. So Thanksgiving is the grateful, is the, is, is the thanks and the gratefulness for the things he's done for us. Okay? And then, then we run into, um, or not run into, Supplication. As I said earlier, supplication means petition. Okay, you're making petition. Um, oftentimes on the behalf of other believers, you're, you're making a petition for a believer. You're, you know, not quite intercession. <clears throat> But you're, 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 you're petitioning, okay, here. And then number five, which would lead us into um, Now let me tell you. See, this can be prayed on your behalf or on behalf of others supplicating. This one is on the behalf of others. The Bible says in the Old Testament, it says, is there not an umpire who can stand betwixt us? You know, is there one, a watchman that stands on the wall? Another, another translation says umpire. Is there not a watchman who can stand on the wall? <clears throat> for the lost, for the heathen, for those who are destitute, is there not anybody who can stand in the gap between them and the Father? This prayer is a non self prayer. Okay? This, this serves self in a, in a sense, okay? This does. This definitely does, okay? This can, but this one serves others. 
You're praying for others. You're standing in the gap for others. Okay? And so, and then next we have Binding and loosing prayer. Now, like I said, we're going to get into some of these over the next couple of weeks. This prayer is the prayer of what? You may want to get, take a guess at what word I'm going to use. Binding and loosing. You guys want to guess what I'm after? What do you have in order to bind and loose? Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. It's an authority prayer. You have authority. Jesus said, whatever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. This is dealing with the powers of darkness. This is dealing with uh, finally powers, mights, rules of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. This is loosing angels. This is binding demons. Okay? This is authority prayer. This is where we take authority over forces working behind things. Okay? <clears throat> And so, and then let's look at this. This will probably be our last one we'll cover in this. Um, one have I not talked about? Come on, folks. Thank you. <laughs> We're a faith church. <laughs> okay. But really, we call it the prayer of faith, but it's really the prayer of what? And I like to make that distinction sometimes because all prayer is to be prayed in faith. Even when I pray this, I'm praying in faith because he said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God to give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. When I go to find out his will, I can go in faith that he will give it to me. Okay? Every prayer I do should be done in faith. Now, I may not have faith to, to do what I'm praying about, but I can have faith in the prayer that I'm praying that I'm going to get the answer <coughs> from God. So the prayer we call the prayer of faith, and we, when you start analyzing it as we teach on it, what several things you, um, um, if any man say unto this mountain, or whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. Verse 22, preceding that said, have faith in God or have the faith of God. <coughs> so we have the prayer of believing and receiving, commonly called in our circles the prayer of faith. But I like to distinguish it in, um, because I believe it, it helps us understand what it is. It also helps us understand that faith is involved in all kinds of prayer. Okay? And so, and we have spent probably... Is receiving spelled right? I always got I before you accept after C, but it doesn't always apply. That rule doesn't always apply. There's some rule breakers. Okay. Um, we want to talk about these different types of prayer over the next few weeks. Okay. And uh, you know, understand some things about them. Eliminate the death of if, if it be thy will. Put it, it with the right rule. The rules that govern the prayer of constant death dedication are under the auspices of if it be thy will. Because that's why we're consecrating to it. <clears throat> that's why we're dedicating to it. But once we know, we move out of that on that particular area in, into belie believing and receiving and ad ad all the other things we can get involved in because we know what God wants us to do. Okay, these are all important types of, of prayer, part of our, of our, uh, hold, the holders of, of praying with God and communicating with God is to have all these things involved. His heart's for the lost. He wants us to petition. He wants us to believe and receive. He wants us to be thankful. He wants our adoration and worship. 
And he wants us consecrated and dedicated to his will. So all these things, and, and, and he wants us to take our position of authority in the earth by binding and loosing. We're not hopeless and helpless. Amen? Amen? Amen. Uh, so praying always with all kinds of prayer in the Spirit. Amen? Amen? So that we can get things done for the kingdom of God. And that is so important. So if we understand, and I'm probably, you, you could probably go in the Bible and say, well, I think there's another kind of prayer. That's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say this is it. This is the complete list. There's nothing else because I'm right. <clears throat> and you're wrong. Two reasons. You challenged me, and then you were still wrong. Okay. No, I'm just saying these are the ones we're going to talk about. These are the, you know, which you would probably find to be uh, premium, top of the crop, uh, cream that flows to the top, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? And so um, we, won't, we, you know, we will spend time on consecration and dedication because God wants your heart. He wants you fully committed to him. He wants you giving your all to him. Amen? Even if it, even if it looks like it's to your detriment, Think about Jesus. Now, Romans chapter 12, <clears throat> no, Hebrews chapter 11, 12, Hebrews 12, says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the shame of the cross. Who for the joy that was set before him. We have to see that, that when did that happen? After Gethsemane. When he consecrated and dedicated to the will of the Father and said, if, it, if there be any other way, let it pass me. If not, not my will, your will be done. When he, once he accepted and committed to that. Did you notice something about Jesus? After that, he didn't open his mouth. As a lamb before the shearers, he opened out his mouth. Who are you? Before Abraham was, I am. Bam! You know, I mean, he would not deviate from the consecration and dedication he had gone. And he knew if he started talking, he could. I know a pastor one time, and um, <clears throat> I love Brother Max. Anyway, um, he's a good pastor, Four Square Church. And he had some people that came back from Raymond, back to our hometown area, and they had gone to his church and... Um, basically ended up starting a, a, a uprising. Some of our Rhema people didn't exactly ex, uh, express the heart of the Hagans and stuff they did. Okay? They didn't teach it. They didn't live it. Not that way. And they were getting up in the middle of the church services, and, I mean, in the middle of the church service and overthrowing the pastor. And, and accusing him of all kinds of stuff right in the middle of church. And he started to defend himself, and he said, and the scripture came to him. As a lamb before the shearers, he opened not his mouth. And he just stood there silently. And God vindicated him. It wasn't easy, but God vindicated him. He's a tremendous man of God. But he, he had a word from God at that moment, and he opened not his mouth. You know, God knows how to, how to get, get you where you need to be, even when you don't like the way it looks. Yeah, <clears throat> and those bozos, I'm sorry, they didn't make it in ministry. I love both of them, but they didn't make it. You can't do things like that. You can't set on course things like that. Either you repent and repent seriously or you're not going to make it. You think you're so great and so hot and so this and so that. <laughs> God can raise up a donkey to take your place. He worship it, he can raise up a chicken. Moves on, I, I get it. I get it. It's just, you, you get what I'm trying to say. We are not 
Um, what, there's an old John Wayne movie um, called They Were Expendable. It's a PT boat movie. Love that movie. Donna Reed's in it. You know, John Wayne. Um, just his, his normal group of uh, cast for some of his movies and stuff. Ward Bond and all those guys. And, um, but the time, they were expendable. You know? You're expendable. Don't ever think God can't do it without you. No. You can't do it without God. <laughs> you can, don't get it backwards. <clears throat> the other way is narcissistic. He can't, I, I'm the one that's got to do it. He can bring in a 10-year-old and take your place tomorrow if, if he needs to and do, get it done. Okay? He, he ha the prophet Elijah said, I and only I am. He said, I've, I've reserved to myself 7,000 that have not bowed their knee knees to Baal. Now get up and go find Elisha and anoint him to be prophet in thy stead. In other words, I'm going to show you who your replacement is. <laughs> I mean, that's what he did. Go anoint him in your stead. Here's your replacement, buddy. You think you can't do it? I can't do it without you? I've already got somebody ready to take your place. Now, it's not a mean thing, but don't ever think. Don't ever think that you, you're, the, you're all that. Okay? One of the reasons God used Dad Hagen the way he did was because of his humility. And he wasn't humble. Some people say, well, the things he would say and the stuff, he was brash. In the spirit, he was brash. Outside that, he was, he was as humble. I mean, he was just humble. He was a humble man. Okay? He didn't think anything of himself. He didn't think he could do all this by himself. He knew the Lord had to do it through him. And this is where some of our generation, the, the generation after him and some of the generation following them have missed it. We began to think that we're all that. I'm telling you, without his anointing, without his power, without his callings, without his giftings, without his favor, we can't do it. Jesse Jackson would go into churches and, and preach. I can do all things. And people would just be standing up and shouting because it's, it's Scripture. But it's partial Scripture. It's motiv motivating people that I can do all things. No. I can do all things through Christ. It strengtheneth me. So he's, not, he's not even talking about Jesus in that sense. He's talking about the anointing. Christ is the anointed one. He's talking about the anointing. I can do all things through the anointing which strengthens me. Outside of that, I can't do squat. Doodly squat. Okay? Or Joe, they must sit down there and Gall Gallivance Ferry, squat doodly. Okay? Okay? Whether it's doodly squat or squat doodly, it's still a doodly and a squat. Really don't know what it means, but probably I'll find out. Maybe we're saying something we shouldn't be saying. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I was, one day I was talking about people being, you know, stuff being dingleberries. And then my son came and told me what that was. I'm like, oh, my God, I've been saying it for five years. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. Just heard the, or just heard the term. I didn't know it was, you know, fecal matter on, in, in the hair of an animal near its, its uh, back end. And saying, you know, they're just dingleberries. <laughs> That probably wasn't in love. That wasn't loving. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got revelation. God sent a donkey to tell me. No, I don't need don't that. I called him a donkey. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, this is what we're going to be covering. Y'all get anything tonight so far? Just kind of getting warmed up. I'm just warming up. Hallelujah. I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up for the meeting in the sky. Say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Jesse, are you still send this stuff? Oh. Okay. Dingleberries? No. Okay. Before we got on that track. Yeah. 
So, you know, that, that's humility. is why God could use it in the way he did. Um, this is why when Brother Copa came to the Lord and said, after he read the book, I Believe in Visions, he said, Lord, you appeared to Brother Hagin seven times, and you're not a respecter of persons. So I believe I'm just going to use my faith to believe that you'll appear to me. And he kept praying that way for a while. And finally the Lord spoke to him and said, all right, Kenneth, I'll appear to you. But it'll set your ministry back five years. As a matter of fact, you might not ever recover. Why? Yeah, he said, forget it. That's all right, Lord. He didn't have the same demeanor. He didn't have the same. And love Brother Cup, but he didn't, have the same, he didn't have the same demeanor that Brother Hagin had. There's something about Brother Hagin's humility and, and whatever that, that he, still, he was still learning. Okay? That he had way back. And maybe it's because he was on the bed of affliction. He spent so much time in prayer as a, as a young lad uh, getting off the bed of affliction. And, and, and maybe, you know, whatever reason, he was, he, he was beyond his years in some of those things. Yeah. Copa wasn't there at that time. Now, maybe, maybe now he could. Okay? But he, he, he was not trying to use his faith to get there. Okay? He knew Brother Hagin could be trusted with it. Not to elevate the man, but at the same time, we understand he can be trusted with it. All right? Praise the Lord. All righty. Anybody, um, well, let's give. Praise the Lord. If you need an offering envelope, Joe's sitting right there. Uh, if you're giving electronically, send it. If you're not doing anything, say praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. And don't forget Sunday, bring some money. Bring some money for your uh, barbecue. And let us, let's get going on this, praise the Lord, and get a count. I really need that count. I need to know, because I don't want to be buying, buying 16 chickens and we're going to use five. I think we use more than five, but, I, you know, again, we don't want to buy, cook 16 chickens and got five left over and just sitting there, and, you know, that's $30, $40 worth of chicken that's just wasted. And we waste the pastor. I'll eat it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing you. I feel it. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Well, next time, remember, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name.